Is AI going to kill coding? A leader at Amazon Cloud seems to think so. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. One of the debates that occasionally pops up on Twitter or some other place is whether AI will kill coding. The idea being that AI is getting very good at coding, and so perhaps we won't need coders in the same way in the future. Well, the latest in this debate comes from Business Insider, who says in a leaked recording, Amazon Cloud CEO Matt Garman told his employees that most developers could stop coding as soon as AI takes over. At a fireside chat, he said, If you go forward 24 months from now, or some amount of time, I can't predict exactly where it is, it's possible that most developers are not coding. Now that said, there is a lot of nuance here, more certainly than the headline would suggest. The point that Garmin was trying to make came out better in this section where he said, coding is just kind of like the language that we talk to computers. It's not necessarily the skill in and of itself. The skill in and of itself is like, how do I innovate? How do I go build something that's interesting for my end users to use? In other words, this suggests that the job of a software developer won't go away, but will simply change. He continued, It just means that each of us has to get more in tune with what our customers need and what the actual end thing that we're going to try to build, because that's going to be more and more of what the work is as opposed to sitting down and actually writing code. Business Insider also went to pains to be clear that Garmin was sharing advice rather than, quote, issuing a dire warning that developers will go extinct. Simply put, being a developer in 2025 may be different than what it was being a developer in 2020. Now, I've talked about this a lot on this show and elsewhere. The biggest reason that I'm not worried about things like there being fewer developers is that I think in a world where coding gets 10 times as easy, we don't have one-tenth of the developers, we have 10 times the amount of code. We simply build more stuff. Now, trying to put a little bit of data around these transformations, we head over to the GitHub blog, where they surveyed 2,000 people from software development teams around the world. More than 97% of the respondents reported having used AI coding tools at work. However, there is a huge range of how supportive their companies are of that behavior. On the low end, 59% of German developers say that their company actively encourages AI tool adoption, all the way up to 88% in the US saying that their company encourages AI adoption. So what are the actual benefits from this? GitHub writes that there were a number, including improvements in code quality, development efficiency, and streamlined workflows. They also noted that AI coding tools helped facilitate upskilling and onboarding, basically easing the transition to new programming languages and making it easier to understand existing code bases. In the U.S., for example, 90% of respondents said that they believe there was an increase in code quality when using AI coding tools, and 60-71% to of respondents said that AI tools make it easy to adopt a new programming language or understand an existing code base. And when GitHub asked what they used that saved time on, the tasks that respondents were able to spend more time doing after using AI coding tools included collaborating with other team members, designing systems and customer solutions, more time for learning and development, more time for researching and experimenting with emerging technology, more time for code review and refactoring, and yes, 34% of developers in the US said that there was also more time for taking breaks. Really interesting survey. There's a lot more to dig into here. I love that we are moving into a phase where we're getting actual data around how people are using AI rather than just subjective opinions. Another bit of welcome news for developers, OpenAI announced that fine-tuning is now available for GPT-4.0. OpenAI writes that fine-tuning for their most powerful model has been one of their most requested features from developers. With this announcement, GPT-40 fine-tuning became available to all developers on all paid usage tiers. A couple other bits of OpenAI news. First, they revealed their first federal agency customer for their ChatGPT enterprise tools, with USAID planning to use ChatGPT to help reduce administrative burden, as well as, quote, make it easier for new and local organizations to partner with the agency. OpenAI also announced another publisher partnership, this time with Condé Nast, which follows the pattern of most of the partnerships that they've announced like it. The biggest difference here is that for the first time, they're discussing their new Search GPT tool, which creates more of a context for these publications, which include Vogue and The New Yorker, to show up as an identified source as part of a query with Search GPT. For those keeping track at home, OpenAI's publisher partnerships now include The Associated Press, Axel Springer, The Atlantic, Datdosh Meredith, Financial Times, Le Mans News Corp, Prism Media, Time, Vox Media, and others. Lastly today, competition continues to heat up in the generative video space with Luma Labs announcing its Dream Machine 1.5 update. It feels like we are at the beginning of a golden experimental age with generative video, although the question for many speaking of OpenAI is where the heck is Sora? For now though, Companies like Luma are giving us lots of great alternatives at a pace that seems to be increasing rather than decreasing.
That's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode.